Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today I have the opportunity to work on a reel for Glenn. Uh, Glenn had some, one of these earlier, it didn't work out. He was missing some pieces and parts. Uh, but this one I'm told is whole, so uh, seems to be working. This one is the Okuma Magna Pro line counter. So it's uh, very much like an Okuma convector. It's a little annoying to work on. You'll see why when we open this thing up. But uh, for the most part, uh, it's serviceable, and we're going to show you how to do that. And we're going to do that by opening up the uh, reel, taking off the exterior pieces and parts first. While I do that, I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. If you have, thank you for the subs. It's always appreciated as we strive to get to 20,000 folks. The, uh, the subs help me and they help you. You'll see when I'm posting fishing reel service videos or information about the fishing industry or fishing companies and their histories and the like. And if you like that sort of thing, well, then a subscription is a perfect thing to do. And if you do subscribe, hit that notification button. You'll see when all of those posts become available. What we're going to start, we took the handle and the handle nut off. The handle nut was a, a, a 10 millimeter. And as we do that, I put all the pieces that I take off into a parts tray. My parts tray is a bottom of a fast food container at the moment. It's been a couple of different things. And uh, whatever works for you in terms of your organization is what I'm going to recommend that you do in terms of keeping track of your parts. Some folks like to lay them out in a row in the order that they've taken them off so that they uh, have a sequence to put them back into. I'm kind of haphazard. Some days I do it one way and some days I do it another. There really is no uh, incorrect way to take pieces and parts off, but just uh, do it however it makes you comfortable to do it. Also from a uh, servicing standpoint, one of the things you'd li like to do is keep track of what you're doing and that best way to do that is by taking pictures. I can't tell you how many folks have come back to me after they've attempted a service and said, you know, you always say take pictures and, well, I thought I could get away without it and here I am, I'm stuck. So take the pictures. They're a visual representation of critical parts in the process and uh, they'll help you get back on track if you do get stuck. All right, one, two, three, four screws were taken out. When I took those screws out, I put them into my parts tray. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that all of those screws were the same size. They are. Some reels they're not. And if you find a reel where it's not the same size, then you want to make sure that you note the location of the shorter or the longer screw and uh, go from there. This one says made in China. And uh, well, I guess most of those reels are these days. There's a good place to take a picture. This is, as I mentioned, it kind of gets annoying, and uh, you're pretty much seeing why it's annoying here. But you're not seeing the whole story in terms of why it's annoying, and that's because that uh, bridge assembly kind of floats, and that becomes a little bit of a problem. The inside of this reel is very clean. It has a ball bearing in the back, so we've gone ahead and oiled that ball bearing. If you saw any kind of junk or dirt or debris, you can remove this side plate. Uh, for this purposes, well, it's clean. You don't need to do anything. And that's kind of interesting because if you look at the outside of this reel, well, the outside of this reel says it's been uh, working hard. So I'm going to go right over to the pole right now and service that. I'm going to move the line guide over to one side by turning the, the uh, shaft of the spool. I'm going to remove the cap that holds the paw. The paw is a little V-shaped cylinder and it rides in the tracks of the uh, worm gear right here. And generally if you do just what I did there, you're going to be able to remove that paw. And you want to remove that paw because the paw has a habit of picking up dirt and debris on the shoulders here. And that's what you want to make sure you eliminate so that it rides freely. I noticed that the person who had this reel um, thought it was a good idea to grease the worm gear. I don't like greasing the worm gear. I think that it traps 
dirt and debris. If you're in a salt water environment, the salt gets on it, evaporates, and then you have this uh, salt encrusted. This is kind of getting trapped in there. You also notice while I do this that I do wear a protective glove on my hand. I do that to keep the various chemicals and the like off of them to the extent that I can. All right, so that's the back end of this reel. Now let's go over to what I'll call the annoying part. Let's go first and foremost to the line counter. If the line counter is working and this reel, that line counter is working, don't take it apart. Save yourself the headache and the tr trouble. There's nothing going on in here. This is a mechanical counter. It's driven by this little wheel here. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe we can show you. Kind of hard, but this little wheel is what's driving the line counter. And if everything is working, please leave it intact. There's a spring and there's some dials and there's some other things in here that do not need to be removed as part of the general service. What does need to be removed is the interior pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. This is a good place before you touch a screwdriver or anything. Please take the picture. Right. I'm going to remove. You notice we have three different screws. A flat screw on the right hand side. A uh, round beveled screw with kind of a built in washer in the center. And a smaller screw which is where your anti reverse dog is. And I like to do this from right to left. You may need the handle to hold this middle uh, piece when you go to take that off. Because this is a direct attached to the main gear. And sometimes that's bolted down pretty good. When you do this, notice what's coming up and how it's coming up on this. Because this is the one that, well, I just call it painful. I just... Uh, it's a balancing act, putting this one back together. I don't, I always try to think when they're manufacturing the reels, what's a, what's a time saver and what's not. So we have the screw and we have a shim washer behind the screw. Then we have a rectangular center here, right here. There's two flat sides and there's a bushing on the uh, back end of that. So you need to make sure that as you go to reinstall, that's the way it looks. Also on the bridge, you're going to notice there's a dimple over here. That's holding that anti-reverse dog in. The depression point on that has got to be facing forward. All right, we're going to take the screw out of this now, and the bridge will be, you'll be able to release the bridge now. So I'm told to go slow because a lot of folks find that they've gone fast. They've got to this point. They've removed pieces and they go, what do I do now in terms of the reassembly because they weren't paying attention. Well, here's your, your reassembly point here. And you can see right there what the problem becomes. You'll notice that this anti-reverse dog has slipped under the click ratchet that holds it. That happens countless times and it is annoying to say the least. But somebody figured out that that was the way they were going to do it. So be it. There is a little cup here that's holding that anti-reverse dog in. There's a wide side and there's a narrow side. The narrow side faces up and that's important when you go to reinstall this piece. Next up, you want to remove the jack. There's a small screw up top here that does that. And I want to get these pieces into my parts tray because I don't want to have something move around and then have it lost. Here's that piece I was referring to and this is real easy to confuse because one side is round the other side has that those two flat sides that go into the bridge and one of the best things I find is to just take that and seat that into the bridge before you go much further I'm trying to do a couple of things here it's, it, that's never good I'll try and show you what I mean there's two flat sides on this 
and it takes a little bit to get these things lined up. I don't know what it is, but remember, dimple down, that bushing goes this way, so it loads from the back, it has two flat sides that merge in. If you don't put that in right, your reel is not going to work properly. All right, we've taken the spring off of the, or we've taken a screw out of that yoke assembly, or jack assembly. You don't need to remove that spring. Here is your, your yoke and your pinion gear. Notice the positioning of the anti-reverse dog. It faces that way. Again, you don't need to remove that spring. And then this whole assembly, the main gear and all of the washers and the like is going to come out. Be careful if you lose that uh, that spring for the yoke, you can just simply go back in. I'm going to take some grease and I'm going to put it into the cavity where the spool is going to anchor. And there's nothing more you really need to do there. These parts are clean. If you needed to clean the anti-reverse dog, you can remove the springs and go ahead and do that. All right, we have a stack here and we have the yoke and the pinion gear. I'm going to start by cleaning the yoke and pinion gear. This is facing out now, and this is facing the spool. So the way to load this is that way. The indentation goes on the side that has the ramps facing outward. We'll go ahead and put the grease onto this. And quite honestly, you can put that right back on there so that it's out of harm's way. Go over to the drag stack now. This is important to note. You have a couple of tension washers. You have two flat washers. You have your drag washers inside and then this is your uh, assembly. Now you can't, some people have tried to do this, you can't put this assembly on here and tie it down. It's impossible to load the anti-reverse dog on reassembly if you've tried to do that. That's just experience speaking there. Okay, we have a hard washer that goes on here. What we want to do is check the condition of the drag washers, make sure that they're all nice and tight. These have been oiled, these are in good condition. I generally would use uh, fishing reel grease or nothing on these. I don't, these appear to be like a carbon tex. So let's go ahead, we'll treat these as if they were carbon techs. You have a, a washer with a very large hole, it's the bottom one. You want to put a little bit of grease on there. Now I use Cal's Universal Dry Grease. You don't need to use dry grease if you don't have it. Use fishing grease. But on these that have the ridges, put it on and then wipe off the excess. I'm going to seat that in there. I'm going to put the whole assembly back on. I'm going to check the teeth of the main gear now. I want to make sure that they're all uniform, that they're not bent out of shape or some other way uh, deformed where it, it could cause an issue with how the reel operates. How does that happen? Line gets trapped inside the reel from time to time. A part breaks and uh, uh, gets lodged in there, it gets bent. All kinds of things happen that uh, are never any good. All right, we have the three um, washers now. So now there's two round ones with kind of flat sides to them, almost looking square. Those are called keep washers. There's one washer with tabs on it. That's called the eared washer. The eared washer always goes in the middle. So we're taking the first of the keyed and put that on. And then this is interesting. We have a solid washer. That's probably what originally came with the reel. Uh, that goes in the center. Just because I don't have replacement washers for this, we're just going to trust that that one was okay. Now we have the two tabs. They sit in the indentations in that main gear. We'll do this one more time. We'll show you what to do with these rigid washers. We're just going to rub it in. That's another use for the glove. We're going to go ahead and grab the paper towel. We're going to wipe off the excess. Why do we wipe off the excess? Well, uh, you won't get a skip, but it'll just press out the unused grease. So you want to make sure that you, um, you just wipe that clean so that you don't have an issue with grease just loading your reel. And then there's a thicker uh, 
heat washer. That one goes up top. And then if we were paying attention, we would note that there was two flat washers that went next. And then we had these tension washers. Now they're not flat, they're curved concave or convex. What I like to do is put the curve facing out on the first one, facing in on the second one, and that's all about the tensioning for the um, star adjuster. Okay, let's go ahead and have fun putting this back together now. So the we kind of reverse the process here. The main gear can go back in now. And I think you've seen right away why this reel becomes painful to work on. I got to make sure that I did not lose the positioning of that uh, gear. So, bring this back in. We have a spacer and we have a bearing. And here's something I learned with this reel just because of the way that this reel operates. I use the star adjuster to hold that assembly in place. Now you can't tighten it up all the way because you're not going to be able to get the back end of the, uh, the set to work properly, but it'll help you to get it as close to that as you can. All right, you have the two springs go on. second washer that goes on there. I don't see it in this assembly. Okay, that little washer that fell out belongs on the shaft of the main gear. Now we're going to take the pinion gear and load that on top of the main. I'm going to flip our jack over. We want to center this jack onto the stud from the eccentric like that, and then we want to grab up our small screw from the parts tray and install that. That's a hard one to get. Again, they put some small pieces, they kind of put a lot of different things happening here. None of them any good in my mind in terms of how do you efficiently install these pieces and parts. It's almost as if they didn't want you servicing this reel. But again, I look at it from the factory standpoint. You would think that the, uh, the factory would want an efficient way to uh, manufacture these things. And I don't care how many times you put it together, it uh, can't be very efficient. All right, you're gonna see that there's a little tag and hanging off of that. And then here's your trip lever wheel, but it also serves as the wheel for your anti-reverse. So let's go ahead and put the anti-reverse on. Remember what I said, narrow end, fat end, if you will. We're going to just kind of work this out a little bit, trying to leave that spring attached. And go ahead and put that uh, piece onto the post. Flip your dog. Losing this. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're servicing one and you're a little bit stuck, uh, if you leave those questions in the comment section, I will be happy to try and apply uh, and answer those for you. All right, you can see how this is working now. This is kind of the same picture that you had. For those of you that have taken it apart and wondered how that anti-reverse dog goes, there it is. It sits that way. It does not sit up the other way. Here's your small side to this. Center hole for that. Now the, uh, the fun is always get this little thing in. It popped out again. So let's see if we can't put that back in. And with that in, we're going to flip this whole thing over. I'm going to try and align all the pieces now. 
is the old with any luck kind of thing. I heard one snap, that's good. I heard the other snap, that's wonderful. I think the, uh, the fishing reel folks uh, didn't want me to make a complete fool of myself trying to do this one, so they gave me a break here, and there we go. I know we took these out in reverse order, but I want to lock that one side down that I know I can lock down quickly. And I want to come over and do the main to lock that down. And again, I've found, and maybe some folks have found a different way to do this, but I've found that about the only way that I can get this thing to even be a little less cumbersome is to put that star adjuster onto that main gear shaft to hold that in place as you do it. If you don't, it's quite a balancing act. And quite honestly, I don't have the agility to uh, to do that kind of a thing. All right, and then we have one long one that's going to hold that anti-reverse in. Just tighten that down. The good thing was we heard that thing snap in nicely. And when it snaps in nicely, that's usually a good indication that you've done what you need to do. And now we'll try and set the one down here for this. Okay, let's take a side trip for just a moment so that everybody understands what's going on here. We put this together and you turn it and you make sure that it turns easy. If you find any resistance, there may be a case where you have trapped that anti-reverse dog. You saw how we were able to do that. If you find that's the case, take a pick Put it in behind the side. You can just, well, I don't know what you can see here, but you can see you can reach the, the arm of that anti-reverse dog with this pick. Pull that to you, and that'll free it if it happens to be trapped. Happens every now and then. Like I said, this is one of the more annoying reels, and getting that AR uh, dog set is a reason for that. All right, let's put a little bit more grease onto the uh, shaft. You don't need to grease the two plastic intersections. This is going to be the worm gear which is driving the line counter. You do not need to grease those. That's plastic on plastic. And we should be able to set the case. Check the seams of the case all the way around. Make sure that there's no tension or anything binding in there as you go to uh, reassemble the reel. If you do, it's not going to work. Something's going to be out of uh, out of whack there, and it'll just uh, it'll pause you. All right, I took the other three screws. I like to go north, south, east, west kind of a thing. I want to keep the tension equal on the side case rather than going in a circular motion. These are, um, I would call them uh, sheet metal screws. They're not. They're the rough threaded uh, plastic screws. They're not the fine thread uh, machine screws. And it doesn't matter where they go because they're all the same size. Okay, with the, uh, the side case nuts attached, let's go ahead and just finish the handle and we'll give it a final test to see how we did. There is a tension washer between the handle and the star adjuster. Handle goes on next. This is a leverage handle. You can use it lower level or high level. This is I believe where it was. If not, Glenn, I'm going to apologize and you're going to need to switch it. I could at this point go back to my video, which is my pictures, and do that. Maybe I will as I start to uh, edit. And if it is, I'll fix it for you, Glenn. All right. And then we'll, uh, of course, if it's your reel you're working on, you already know how you like it set up. All right. The nut cap, the handle nut, everything is on. Let's reset the counter. The counter is working, the reel is nice and smooth. Do we have a free spool? Yes, we do. You can adjust that free spool. This is a little tight, but you can adjust that free spool as much as you like. This line guide is going to travel as you let the line out. And do we have a trip back? Well, we do. It's an automatic trip. Remember that little tag I showed you on that uh, free spool release? And of course, the line encounter is doing what it should be doing. So that's it. That's your Okuma Magda Pro. Uh, real I really don't uh, <laughs> don't enjoy, but uh, to each their own. 
Mine has to do with the uh, mechanics of the servicing and that. And I just find it a little bit uh, cumbersome to work on. Maybe that's just me. Maybe everybody's got their, uh, their one little reel that just is uh, problematic for them. And this one just happens to be mine. Just checking to make sure that our click works as well. So, to all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe uh, during the pandemic. To all, I hope you have a great day fishing. I hope you find the time to go fishing. Life's too short. Uh, and if you do have fishing uh, in mind, keep your reel serviced. Keep them ready to go so that if you do hook the big one, well, you don't have a fish story. You have a big fish instead. To all, Please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.